Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. It's been a while since we talked about the safe deposit box raid out there in California, where the FBI raided a business that had private safe deposit boxes. And the FBI got the permission to raid the building and take possession of certain things in the building. And the order they got specifically said that they're supposed to uh, go after the business and that they could inventory some of what was on the grounds but they, they were not supposed to bust open these boxes and look inside them because the boxes were unrelated to the original claim against that business. And they went ahead and did it anyways. And much litigation has ensued, including by the Institute for Justice. And so this story is just dragging through the courts. But a court did, in fact, rule that the raid was unconstitutional. And so many of the people who had stuff in those boxes said, well, I want my stuff back now. And it turns out a lot of that stuff went missing. It was it was inventoried, uh, but it, it went missing. And the weird thing is the stuff that went missing was extremely valuable and was the kind of stuff that if you had it, you could convert it into cash or, or, or sell it or do something with it that, that would not be traceable. And you wonder how it is that the FBI loses stuff that valuable when they've inventoried it. Because remember, the point behind inventorying something is to show, here's what you had, we're making sure you get it back. And if you inventory something and then lose it, well, then the inventory became meaningless. So why'd you do it? So you could have left the stuff in the boxes and just held the boxes. But no, we're going to open them up, see what's inside there, and we're going to lose some of it. Lose some of it. Yes. (laughs) So I got this email yesterday from Scott Bullock at the Institute for Justice. Steve, I've got good news to share with you in our ongoing efforts to hold the FBI accountable for its unprecedented and illegal raid of the hundreds of safe deposit boxes at U.S. private vaults. After facing mounting pressure from an IJ lawsuit, the FBI has agreed to fully compensate property owners who had cash and coins go missing after the FBI raided their safe deposit boxes. In January, a federal appellate court held that the entire raid violated the Fourth Amendment. This separate case arose when the FBI failed to return, among other things, 63 gold coins to our client and then refused to compensate him when they said we don't have them anymore. The FBI, of course, tried to say they were immune to such claims, but after a judge denied that, the FBI finally gave up and agreed to pay him. Since we sued the FBI and exposed what it did to the customers of U.S. private vaults, hundreds of thousands of dollars in property have been returned to our clients. Hundreds of thousands more has been paid in compensation for lost property because they lost a bunch of it. Uh, Weird how that happens. And many millions of dollars in seized property has been returned to other box holders. So the man here who got his stuff back is going to be paid said the FBI had no reason to go through my box and they were careless in losing my coins. He's being generous there in saying that they lost the coins. They lost the coins. It should not have taken a lawsuit for the government to do the right thing. And I remember, I've done stories about this before, and said, if someone accused me of stealing, I wouldn't say, I've got qualified immunity. You can't make me pay you back. <laughs> I'd say, I don't steal. What are you talking about? And every time I say that, I get there's, there's, there's a couple of people out there who get very upset with that. And if you honestly think that the FBI inventoried cash and gold, and then after inventorying it, they lost a whole bunch of it, they, they lost a whole bunch of it? <laughs> really? That's, that's the theory you're going with? Okay. No, you're, you're entitled to that. Moreover, this lawsuit uncovered very troubling details about the FBI's handling of property during the raid. While the FBI started by making careful records of box holders' property, they quickly abandoned these procedures in favor of completing the raid faster. As a result, many valuables disappeared without a trace. IJ filed a similar lawsuit on behalf of other box holders. After $2,000 in cash went missing from their box, the FBI agreed to pay the two the full value of the misplaced property to settle the case. And I mentioned before, I went to a retreat put on by the Institute for Justice a little while ago. And there I met Scott Bullock, the man who wrote this email. But I also met a bunch of his clients, including some people who had stuff disappear from their boxes. And I was talking to him about it, and there's... <laughs> The FBI takes possession of your stuff and says, don't worry, we inventoried it. Then later, when they're ordered to give it back to you, they go, we can't. Why not? We don't have it anymore. What happened to it? We don't know. 
Okay, what does inventory to you mean? What, what, does, what does it mean to you? It means you, you make a note of what's there, but you should hang on to it. What's the purpose of inventorying if you're going to lose it or, or worse? And again, saying they lost it, I think, is being generous. Thank you for standing with us. This is uh, Scott Bullock writing. As we unravel the FBI's search, seizure, and forfeiture scheme and reinforce the constitutional protections afforded to us all, Scott G. Bullock, President and Chief Counsel, Institute for Justice. So here's the thing. There are all these boxes filled with all kinds of stuff. And, and I know people um, who have safe deposit boxes, and I talk to them about the kinds of things they put in there. And some people will, will put cash, valuables, things they don't like leaving laying around their house, but also just stuff like passports or, or jewelry uh, and, and all manner of things. It's, it's crazy the kind of stuff that if you think about it, if you, had a, if you had a space this big that was secure, what would you put in it? And most people go, oh, I have a couple things I'd put in there. And so when the FBI raided the private vaults company, the FBI was going after, in essence, the people who ran that, that business, okay? And they said there is this illegal operation happening in this building. But when we raid the building, because these boxes are there, they kind of get swept up in the, in the raid. <clears throat> so the judge who gave them an order and said, yes, you can go ahead and, and, and go in there and raid this building, had said, in essence, that you can take possession of these boxes, but you can leave them shut. You don't have to open them up. And apparently, the FBI decided, well, we really do need to open them up. We need to. But it's okay because we'll inventory the contents. So they're going to bust into all these boxes, and they bust into a box, and let's say it contains you know, a, 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 some, some money, uh, some widgets, uh, a couple old photographs, uh, some old jewelry, which, by the way, to an untrained eye, they don't know what this stuff is, other than it's like a ring. Is that a wedding ring? Is that a wedding ring that's an heirloom, or is it a wedding ring that belongs to uh, a, a person who would wear it back when they were married? You know, like their ring, okay? And, and, and a, a black and white photograph of somebody. So presumably they'd write down, we found this much in currency, uh, one gold ring, uh, one black and white photograph, and they'd inventory these things. Do they put the stuff back in the box and leave the box in the building? No, of course not. They take the box with them. How is it they inventory what's in the box? It's a safe deposit box that has keys to it. How is it they lose, lose the contents of those boxes? How is that possible? This is not that complicated of a thing. If it was your job to take these boxes, inventory their contents, and then put them someplace safe, the average person goes, that's not that difficult of a job. It's only a difficult job when you have a lot of people involved, and some people go, you know, some of the people here are not going to come forward because they don't want to get on the radar of the government for having tons of cash in this box. So chances are some of these people won't come forward. Will they really miss this? And if they do miss it, will they actually sue the federal government and the FBI and accuse us of theft? <laughs> Gee, if stuff gets lost, maybe no one will come looking for it. And I pointed out before, if you were a victim of this, if this happened to you, and let's suppose they lost a couple of your gold coins that are worth a few thousand dollars, are you going to file a lawsuit that's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars to recover that? Most people would say, no, it's not worth it. On principle, maybe, but, but no, it's not worth it financially. However, if the Institute for Justice steps in and says, don't worry, our bills are paid by other people. We'll take care of this because we think it's a constitutional problem. Oh, oh, suddenly you got lawsuits and suddenly you got results. So I have to, again, salute the Institute for Justice. I love those people. And when they get involved, that's when you see things happening. Because usually the government can outspend the average person and go, okay, you want to sue us? We're going to make it painful for you. It's going to cost you so much money, you're going to lose no matter what happens. Institute for Justice got involved. Guess what? Things happen. So we got some stories here about people getting their stuff back. And, for instance, a case where the FBI failed to return 
63 gold coins. Now, some people are going to say, Steve, there's a big problem here. Who is to say I didn't have 500 gold coins? Oh, don't forget they did inventory the stuff before they lost it. Before they lost it. So if the inventory showed 63 gold coins, you say, I want my 63 gold coins. Oh, I'm sorry. We lost them in the inventory process. <laughs> and that's the funny part, is that the inventory process was apparently done well enough to document what they were going to lose in the future. <laughs> so I can't stress this enough. If you can, support the Institute for Justice. Send them a donation. Send them a couple bucks. I'm going to put a link to them in the description below the video. Even if you can't support them, bookmark their page and read about these stories and other stories just like it. And go, there's still good people on this planet who are looking out for the interests of, of others who can't take care of themselves, like I said, because it would be economically unfeasible to do so. So the Institute for Justice has another big win here, and this has to do with the FBI being forced to compensate victims of the illegal raid of the U.S. private vaults, and they're actually compensating people for things that were lost after the inventory. All the things we lost after the inventory. <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Before computers, Compress was something you did to garbage, not something you did to a file.